today, another guilty plea tied to FTX, this time from the company's former engineering chief. Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong argues crypto is the most important technology that can update the financial system. And Haney Rashwan of 21 Shares breaks down what's next when it comes to institutional adoption of crypto. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World, I'm Tanea McKeel. Digital currencies are starting the month of March with a little bit of a rally. By noon Eastern, Bitcoin, Ether, and Solana all jumped roughly 1.7%. Looking back at February, crypto finished the trading month relatively flat with Bitcoin eking out a less than 1% gain and Ether inching up 2.5%, still outperforming the S&P 500. The broad market stock index closed the month down 2.6%. All right, let's talk about the top stories. First, another former executive at FTX just pleaded guilty to fraud charges. Nishad Singh, the company's former head of engineering, pleaded guilty in a New York court to six charges, including conspiracy to commit securities fraud, conspiracy to commit money laundering, and conspiracy to violate campaign finance laws. Manhattan U.S. Attorney Damian Williams said the guilty plea, quote, underscores once again that the crimes at FTX were vast in scope and consequence. They rocked our financial markets with a multi-billion dollar fraud. Lawyers for Singh said in a statement, quote, Nishad is deeply sorry for his role in this and has accepted responsibility for his actions. He wants to do everything he can to make things right for victims, including by assisting the government to the best of his ability in the case. Singh joins Caroline Ellison, the former head of Alameda Research, and Gary Wong, one of FTX's founders in guilty pleas for crimes committed by the crypto exchange. Next, Voyager's customers voted overwhelmingly in favor of the bankrupt lender's bankruptcy plan. In a tweet yesterday, Voyager said 97% of customers voted in favor of the Chapter 11 plan, representing 98% of the total claims. The billion-dollar restructuring plan would see Binance US acquire the company, but regulators at the state and federal level have raised opposition to the deal, saying it could prevent ongoing probes into the company's dealings. Finally, in an exclusive interview with CNBC's Squawk Box, Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong argued that crypto is the most important technology that can help update the financial system. He also stressed that the crypto space needs new legislation and discussed how soon to expect it. Everybody saw what happened with FTX and they said, OK, we need to make sure there's strong consumer protection. We also recognize that there's innovation potential here and we don't want this to be like 5G or um, something like that, you know, the semiconductor industry that got moved offshore too much. We need this to be built here in America with strong consumer protection. So there's at least three different groups I'm aware of in D.C. Uh, senators that are working on different bills being drafted in various different forms. And, you know, it's, it's, it takes a, lot, a small miracle anytime something actually becomes law. But I'm excited to see that there's people who are passionate about that, making that happen. Armstrong has an op-ed out today where he argues offshoring crypto hurts the financial system and America's geopolitical standing. You can check that out over on CNBC.com. All right, on to our main story. Let's turn back to crypto markets. U.S. institutional players have been cautious but remain interested in crypto assets. I spoke to Haney Rashwan, the CEO of 21 Shares, about which crypto projects and assets are getting the most attention. Let's talk about institutions for a little bit. So institutional investor sentiment, what does that look like for crypto right now? Are institutions, are, inv are, are they investing? Where are they putting their money? Um, you know, I know on the side of the institutions as corporations, we got a lot, uh, we got quite a handful of glimpses, I would say, in February of uh, positive sentiment. What are you seeing in terms of um, individual institutional investor types? The sentiment is, um, is moving in the positive direction, I would say, at a minimum. So um, at 21.co, we're, we're the parent company of 21 shares, which is the world's largest issuer of crypto exchange traded products. Um, they're available everywhere, over a billion in AUM, um, primarily in Europe, Asia, and the Middle East. And we get to see both retail and institutional flows because our, our products are both retail accessible as well as geared and built for institutions. And what we've been noticing is an, a, a bunch of things. On the numbers side, we've had the best month uh, it, the second best January uh, in company history just now. Um, I'll have to look at February's numbers, but I, it's, I assume that it will be pretty high up as well. And so people are clearly coming back. They're um, buying the dip. They're buying the fundamentals. On the institutional side, we're speaking to a number of large institutional players, the pension funds, the insurance companies, et cetera, 
Some of these uh, we've been speaking to for three years, three and a half years. But you can see real work happening, and it does sometimes take a very long time to do. And we're now talking about nine-figure allocations and things like that. So I would say overall, from the retail excitement, which is part of what has been driving the recent price action, to institutions taking this very seriously, um, to the um, specific assets that they're interested in. We're seeing that across, across the board. Because um, obviously, as institutions are coming in, and we're seeing it with the broader retail flow as well, they're, they're increasingly more interested in the bigger assets, in Bitcoin, in Ethereum, perhaps in HODL, which is our top five basket, and less of some of the smaller, more esoteric crypto assets. So we're seeing this flight to quality as well, um, associated with the bigger numbers. February was interesting because there were so many catalysts on the upside or the downside that were you know, a little bit more specific to what's going on inside the crypto industry and less with yeah. the macro. But, you know, we just had that FTX blow up that the uh, that the crypto space is still recovering from. We got a little bit of a regulation spook in February, mm -hmm. which, uh, you know, you saw that big dip and then that rally back higher. But prices sort of in a lull ever since they recovered from that regulation spook. So right now, what are big concerns for institutions? So I think your overall sentiment is right in that nothing has truly been 100% fixed yet. We're, we're in flux. We're exfoliating the scene, if you will. But it's not done yet, and there's still a lot more work to do. So us going sideways, which is what you're describing, makes sense for a while longer. I don't, I don't really think it's going to be such a crazy historic year in terms of prices or things like that. I could always be wrong, but I do think that we're still figuring it out. The really interesting thing about crypto is that in addition to all of the things you've mentioned, and 2022, I remember started off horribly, had a bad middle, and then ended up terribly, right? And so the, the year overall from just general economics was not, was not fantastic. In addition to that, we in the crypto world, while that was happening on the macro, were experiencing our own version of Bernie Madoff, um, our own... Um, crazy policies that were unsafe that today you're seeing five, six, seven different companies, big ones that have been linked in one way or another to Luna or FTX or Genesis or DCG, et cetera, try to fix some of these issues or try to deal with some of the ramifications of what has happened. So we're being doubly hit in on, on one end. Um, the recent regulatory changes I think there were two sides of looking at it. One was the initial reaction from the market, which to your point was pretty bad. Once you look at it um, and you look into it in detail and you see the regulatory status of crypto globally is pretty attractive. We wouldn't be a big company otherwise. Uh, and that takes a little bit longer to really see and discover, uh, but it's part of the overall story. Final thing for me, earlier this year in January, the SEC rejected your joint effort with ARK for a spot Bitcoin ETF. We've got uh, kind of a decision day coming up for Grayscale and their effort to convert uh, GBTC. What's your optimism for an ETF uh, this year or beyond, given all the recent action from the SEC and, you know, we'll be saying for a long time, the recovery from FTX? I think based on what we have seen um, so far, it would be very surprising if this is a quick process. It normally is not a quick process, um, although it is usually quicker than it has been with, with respect to the Bitcoin ETF. I don't believe it's going to be a quick process. I do think it is inevitable that Americans will have local products in USD uh, that track the price of crypto one-to-one -one that allows them to invest in it, to put it in their retirement account in a safe, scalable, transparent way. It's inevitable. It's a lot of details. And there are a lot of people involved that um, are looking for very different things. And it's just a process. So remain very bullish on crypto overall. Remain bullish on crypto in the US in the medium term and working every day to make both of those ecosystems uh, better and bigger. Okay, that's all for Crypto World today, but we'll be back again tomorrow, so we'll see you then.